from Long Beach, California, the MCU Sports Network presents NAIA Men's College Soccer, the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles versus the Marymount California University Mariners. Hi everyone, welcome to Long Beach City College alongside Rob Abreu, I'm David Smock, and a big matchup in the Cal Pal Conference today between Embry-Riddle and Marymount, California. Embry Riddle, the 2012 Cal Pack champions, and right now for the Mariners, they are currently sitting all alone in first place atop the Cal Pack Conference South Division. And basically, we're looking at, at two high. Uh, high power teams, and both of them have streaks on the line today, Rob. That's right. Both teams coming into today's ball game extremely hot. Embry Riddle trying to go for its third consecutive win, while Marymount College is going for four in a row, which would be a season high. And of course, this is the first of a home and home series between these two ball clubs. The Mariners will wrap up their 2013 campaign down in Prescott, Arizona, right before the Cal Pack Conference Tournament, which will also be held and hosted by Embry Riddle. Visiting with Mark Hervin, the men's soccer head coach at Marymount California University. And first of all, Mark, you're a perfect six and zero. You're atop the standings in the uh, Cal Pack Conference South Division. Has to be pretty good. You've been spending most of your season uh, chasing Soka. Got a little bit of help from some other teams, and now you're just trying to stay there on top. Yeah, I mean, you know, once you get to the, it's always nice to get to the top, but um, once you get there, it's, it's extremely difficult to stay there. Um, you seem like you've got a target on, the, on your back, and everybody wants to be the first team to uh, defeat you. And, um, you know, as always, I feel that it was always going to come down to, to ourselves and Embry-Riddle, um, two very strong teams. This is a, a, next, you know, a very exceptional quality team that we're playing today. Um, they won it last year. They got a lot of the same players. So today's going to be a, uh, a good battle. Um, with two quality teams. Because we've talked about Victor Algren before. Now he's the uh, Cal Pack Conference Co-Player of the Week. He's third in the nation in scoring. I mean, how many more accolades can you say about Victor? Well, it'd be nice if he was first in the, uh, in the country for scoring. That would be good. Um, you know, look, Vic, Victor's a quality player, and, and um, we know that he's a game changer. Um, he could be out of the game, be marked out of the game, and get one opportunity, and he'll take it. That's the sort of player you want on the on the field, but he's, he's, he's a marked man. He's going to be marked um, today, and, and, and they've got some good, strong defensive players that will try and take his strengths away. Um, and that's the, it's important now that some of the other players step up and shine, which, you know, they have been so far. What's your injury report looking like uh, going into the match today? Yeah, you know, you're halfway through the season. You, I think every team's got their little niggles, their little uh, stiffness, their little small injuries, and uh, we've got two key um, long-term injuries, uh, both defenders, which um, you know we've had to adjust and we've had to make some changes. But you know we've got a good, strong squad this year, and we're able to do that. But uh, there's a few aches and pains out there. But they're young and uh, they're playing the game they love, and they won't get no sympathy from me for that. <laughs> right. Thanks for the visit. Good luck today. No problem. Thank you. Buzzing boys. Buzzing boys. Yeah. Robert Brayu here with Embry Riddle head coach Adam Pierce, coach. Going for three in a row today, you feel like you guys are hitting your stride and maybe turn the corner this part of the season? I hope so, yeah. This this is the, definitely the tough, toughest part of the schedule, uh, tough road trip, but uh, good momentum coming off the conference victory at Soka on Friday night, which is a, a, an organized team, competitive team, a uh, very resilient team. So hopefully it bodes well for, for us, but uh, I'm very confident in my group, and, and we look forward to a great competition today. Now you talked about the tough part of the schedule. Let's talk about your opponent today, Embry Riddle. This team's also streaking, coming in, winning three in a row. Talk about their high-powered offense and what maybe the game plan coming into today to maybe try to stop that offense. You know, the, the interesting thing about about Marymount is that uh, we're we're very different styles, very different groups of players, very different universities, and so it's it's tough to uh, to try and adjust too much to them. Our our basic basic approach today is to to assert ourselves on the match and have them adjust to us and if we can do uh, do what we do better then I think we'll be okay if not then uh, we're up against a very formidable opponent and uh, I'm, I'm sure sure we're gonna have our hands full so it seems like you guys are really focused on yourselves I know this is your first year being the head coach but by any chance did you take a look at last year's game took a look at the tape of that film yeah, the, the the best I could do, I did have have a look at. Of course, the players are different, um, but 
it it gives you a little idea of of what's going on. Hopefully, because Coach Hervin, uh, you know, was here before, that uh, you know might give an idea about what he's doing. But ultimately, it's just I haven't talked to, to my players too much about it. Mainly, just kept our focus on us. Um, but it's always good to have those in my back pocket just in case. Well, Coach, thank you so much, and good luck today. Thanks very much. Appreciate it, Rob. Okay, now, Jeremy, just go ahead and, and stand there. Still shooting them? Yeah, just keep the mic pointed. So both teams have shaked hands, and we're just about set for Cal Pack Conference soccer here at Long Beach City College. One of the reasons this game is being played here today instead of normally uh, field number five at the StubHub Center is uh, due to a scheduling conflict. And so we're down here in Long Beach. This is the third separate home pitch, so to speak, uh, in parentheses, uh, that the... Uh, Mariners will have played on. They started off with Seahawks Stadium at Los Angeles Harbor College, then at uh, field number five at the StubHub Center in Carson, and now here at the Long Beach City College Vikings Softball Complex. Both teams kind of in their final huddle for Marymount California University. They're normal, what we've heard fans describe as the Bumblebee uniforms, the uh, uh, dark navy blue and yellow uh, horizontal stripes, uh, blue shorts and yellow socks. Meanwhile, for Embry-Riddle, the Eagles will be wearing their white jerseys with blue pants. Embry-Riddle, the 2012 defending CalPAC Conference champions, taking on the number one team in the NA, or actually the number one team in the Cal Pack Conference, South Standings, in the Marymount California University Mariners. And maybe the hottest team, streaking wise, as far as NAIA is concerned. No other team really scoring on the level of Marymount College. And again, both teams coming in today streaking. 
Embry Riddle going for three in a row, while Marymount College looking for their season high fourth win in a row. Marymount, California, they're eight and two overall, six and zero in the Cal Pac Conference as the Mariners kick off. Marymount, California, we've talked about all these different fields that they've played on as a home pitch, but the Mariners so far are in home games five and one this season. Coming in, Embry Riddle, as Rob just mentioned, trying to go for three wins in a row. They are 4-0 and 1 undefeated in the California Pacific Conference. However, they are 5-2 and 1 overall. And Marymount, California, with a three-point lead ahead of La Sierra and Soka University of America. And of course, our next telecast will showcase Marymount, California hosting the Soka. University of America Lions, and that game will be right here on the MCU Sports Network. Right now, both teams trying to control the ball. One of the things, Rob, to look for is how well that the Mariners control the ball in their half of the pitch. Just a quick early observation. I know last time we saw Marymount College were a little nicked up, banged up. Alba Sith came out. Algren came out with injuries. Already see number nine, five eleven junior forward Fernando Ruiz. Looked like he might have tweaked a groin muscle. Keep an eye on him and see if he could shake that off. Because in our last telecast, uh, Marymount, California recorded a big home win, uh, dropping Menlo College four to two. That even the Oaks. Cal Pack mark at one and one and three and four overall. Now, Victor Algren, you know, he's leading the team uh, with his foot. And it's one of the reasons why he was named the California Pacific Conference Co Men's Soccer Player of the Week. Now, Algren, a senior forward from Sweden, scored the Mariners' second goal in that match against. Menlo College, as you saw right here on the MCU Sports Network, giving him a conference leading 14 on the season. He is the Cal Pack leader in all offensive categories except assists. And on the national level, he is first in shots, second in points with 33, and third in goals with 14. And just like we've mentioned in the uh, pregame, we're already starting to see basically MCU controlling the ball. However, this is the deepest that Embry Riddle has had the ball in the left half of the pitch. Boy, Embry Riddle, if there's ever a team that's going to be able to slow down Marymount College and Victor Algren, it'd be the Eagles. They returned two all conference players from last year defenseman senior Kilden Hatch and junior Ryan Holt today dealt with the task of trying to control this high-powered offense from Marymount California University. Andre Winchell had the throw in. Thomas Boozer was trying to corral the ball over in the corner, but it was kicked out of bounds. And now another throw in. That was right in front of the goal mouth. Uh, with the ball is Hal Kelden Hatch and he's marked off of it. The goalies, we have John Samardi from Barcelona, Spain. He's a junior, and in goal for Marymount, California, Christos Vogler, 6'3", sophomore goalkeeper from Sweden. So I kind of feel like we're, we're watching the UEFA championships. We touched on it last week about Marymount College's international flavor. Embry Riddle as well. We mentioned San Marti from Barcelona, but also Peña out of San Paulo, Brazil. Isaac Sanchez, the Cal Pac freshman of the year, also international from Mexico City, Mexico. If you're not familiar with the rules in college soccer, uh, in international play and pro play as the ball is hit out of bounds by uh, Emil Patterson that basically it's 45 minutes the official scoreboard clock keeps time not the official so there's no added time or extra time or whatever we want to call it like you see in the international and MLS also players can come out of the game and re-enter 
uh, at the college level, which you cannot do. You only have three substitutions at the international and, and pro level, and usually once you come out, you're done for the day uh, as far as that match is concerned. But in college, you have a little more flexibilities, which certainly adds to the you know what the coaches can do. And you know it's worth noting that for our broadcast today at kickoff, the weather conditions here in Long Beach, California, sunny. 83 degrees, although it feels like 80. And with the kind of the breeze we have, it actually feels a little bit uh, less than that. And wind, uh, not much at all north from the northeast at 2 miles per hour, although we felt gusts may be a little bit stronger than that right before the game. And by the time we the game is over, uh, we'll be up to 88 degrees. So starting out at 83, going up to 88 by the end of the match. The humidity is worth mentioning, very dry, 9%. Humidity will go, drop down a little bit more to 8% by the end of the match. Dave, going back to that rule about the clock and no penalty time, I really feel that really plays an advantage to the spectators and the fans. We don't see as much stalling as you would see in professional and international soccer. There's really a sense of urgency. You see both teams always rushing to get the ball back into play. No score in the first half. We'll have to check on the scoreboard clock as it's to our right, so we can't see it as opposed to being on the uh, far side of the field. So we'll periodically check on that with the official scorekeeper. Oh, nice hard kick by Kelvin Hatch. Hatch from San Diego. Number of Southern California players on this Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University roster. Now, one of the things about Embry-Riddle, there's actually two Embry-Riddles. The one in Prescott and there's also one in Daytona Beach, Florida. This is the team from Prescott. We also understand that another accepted pronunciation is Prescott, but so is Prescott. As we mentioned in our pregame, Embry-Riddle will be hosting the 2013 California Pacific Conference Soccer Tournament right after the regular season comes to an end. In case you're just joining us, the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles in the white jerseys, blue numerals, blue shorts, and the Marymount California University Mariners in their dark blue and yellow striped jerseys and dark shorts along with the matching yellow pants. They've actually got to head out to Embry-Riddle a few weeks ago, caught their game against Concordia. It's going to be a beautiful place for the Cal Pac Conference Championship Tournament. The campus is beautiful. Look, everything looks about brand new, brand new facilities. You really couldn't ask for a better place to hold that tournament. And, of course, adding to the importance of this match, the top two teams in each division will advance to Prescott Right now, if it was to begin tomorrow, so to speak, uh, Marymount California University would be in as they sit atop the CalPAC Conference South Division. Well, Embry-Riddle doing a lot better job here as opposed to the first couple of minutes. And there is a ball that's knocked away on the shot by, it looked like Isaac Sanchez, who put it right in front of the goal mouth. And the ball is handled by Crystals Vogelis. And Rob, we just have the sense, I mean, these are two high-powered teams. You know, one goal may go a long way in deciding who wins this match. Yeah, and I think it's very important for Embry-Riddle to get out ahead early. I could see Marymount rallying with their high-powered offense. Not sure if the Eagles are capable of coming back. Sanchez gives the ball over to Jacob Breck. Breck is marked off the ball. Breck out of Norway. Yeah, he thought that one had gone out of bounds. Still a live ball as it comes out towards midfield. Breck was all conference last year, also the newcomer of the year in the Cal Pack. And Scott Smith marked off of it. It was stolen away by Andre Winchell. Now trying to chase it down, Breck. Now, so he's going up against Sasha Hacker for Marymount, California. Still no score, first half. We're in Long Beach, California, on the campus of Long Beach City College. And just as a note of transparency, I'm a graduate of Long Beach City College. And first time I've ever done a televised game.
from here, my old alma mater. Driving over towards the field today, though, you see all the new buildings that have gone up the last couple of years. I tell you, it does not look <laughs> like the uh, liberal arts campus, as they call it. Boy, how things yeah, change. Oh, right? my goodness. Yes, they have. Throw in by the Mariners. Uh, it's headed off of Kerry Allen. Another header signed by Sanchez. Could be a big play coming up. Ooh. Free ball, but tracking it down, coming up with it is Tony Gonzalez for the Mariners. Gonzalez gets it over to Victor Algren, but Algren couldn't keep it in bounds. Now there'll be a throw in. We'll see if Algren will do it. Actually, it looks like Emil Patterson's going to come over and do the honors. No corner kicks yet, but we've had some very good throw ins. Well, that one's just going to be a little one to try to set it up. Sometimes you've See him almost right in front of the goal mal. Off of Hacker. And off of Here, Mark Patterson. Mark Rubin yelling at Sasha Hecker to drop back. Really coming up very high there. I'm not sure Hecker or Hacker. I've heard both names. <laughs> we'll go with both. Yeah, either we'll, or, right? Yeah, we'll check at halftime. Kind of like, you know, Prescott, Prescott. But Coach Hervin there, very concerned with letting Jacob Breck sneak behind the defense once... Sasha to keep his eye on him. You know, the original forecast for this match today was talking about temperatures maybe about 10 degrees warmer than they are. And I was thinking coming into this match, you know, how much dehydration may play a part of this. But actually right now, it doesn't, I don't think it's, it's too bad. To, you know, both teams have uh, some canopy tents to kind of keep them cool so everything works out okay. Yeah, and I think... As the game progresses and as we continue to progress with this tie score, really we're going to see who the deeper team is and see which team gets affected, which team has fatigue and ends up surrendering that first score. And as we mentioned, uh, the weather forecast is game time 83 degrees. However, that, that's kind of tempered by, by the fact that you know, it's only going to feel like it's 80 with 9% humidity and wind out of the northeast at 2 miles per hour. But, you know, by the end of the game, we're talking about 88 degrees, although it's going to feel like 84. We have 8% humidity and wind out of the east-northeast at 3 miles per hour. The ball hit down by Gonzalez, trying to track it down and do something with it is Kerry Allen for Embry-Riddle. So still no score. Rob, I'm going to have you check with the goal, with the uh, timekeeper right now to see where we are here in the first half. And yeah, right now, both teams kind of in a little bit of keep-away mode. So 32 minutes remaining in the first half. Again, the clock being kept on the scoreboard and not necessarily by the referee. Although maybe out of force of habit, the referee has that uh, watch going. And then if the referee wants to call time, uh, he just simply tells the uh, scoreboard operator to stop the clock very much like you might see in American football. So again, around about the 30-minute mark here in the first half, the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles from Prescott, Arizona, and the Marymount California University Mariners with their Ocean View campus in Rancho Palos Verdes, California, no score. I know it's early, Dave, but we really haven't seen a lot of touches out of Victor Algren or Samith Alba Sith. Yeah, in our last televised game, Alba Sith had three assists on the uh, four goals that the Mariners scored in that match against Menlo College. Now San Marty sends the ball down, and on one bounce, that's going to go out of bounds. Looking at it was Isaac Sanchez. As long as that was Tony Gonzalez for the Mariners. Now a throw in coming up by Patterson. Yeah, Alba Sith had those three assists, but you could have argued he should have had five last week. Accuracy on some of the balls he hit were just unbelievable. So a restart for Embry Riddle. And it's kicked back by Fabio Pena. And actually, he's just actually 
was basically give it to Kelvin Hatch. So Hatch with a restart. We talked Here. about the experience and quality of the defensive backfield for Embry Riddle. Hatch, fifth year senior. Yeah, we're talking about the international players on, on both rosters. You know, Embry Riddle, you know, they have Alex Eldon from Littleton, uh, Colorado, Josh Day from Peoria, Arizona, the suburb of Phoenix. Uh, you have uh, Mac Hannis from Cross Plains, Wisconsin. Of course, some uh, California players. You have uh, uh, Winchell and Reinhardt from Las Vegas, Nevada. Strohmeyer from Phoenix. Uh, you also have uh, Ryan Holt from Chandler, Arizona, which is kind of a sub suburb of Phoenix, uh, the southwest side. Uh, Chase Carlson from Snoqualmie, Washington, up near Seattle. Uh, Everett, Washington, Alex um, uh, Vileitka uh, is from Everett. Again, that's uh, just north of Seattle. Beautiful save there, Dave, by Joe on San Marti. Just to finish, Isaac Hine is from, from uh, Kalua, Hawaii. Uh, and then you have uh, Philip Murray from Juneau, Alaska, and Isaac Sanchez from Boise, Idaho. So you have an international player and player from players from all over, with only a, a handful of players actually from Arizona. I think, believe that was Fernando Ruiz on the shot. Funny thing about some of the Embry-Riddle American players, they were actually born Overseas, Keldon Hatch, or excuse me, Trishan Chorus out of Los Angeles, actually born in South Africa. A goal! And a goal for the Mariners off of the corner kick. So see who the goal is scored by. So we understand that Josh Edwards with the goal. We'll check on the assist at halftime. But right now, the Marymount California University Mariners with a 1-0 lead and Dave, over that's, Embry Riddle. That's an absolutely huge goal. Really sets the pace for Marymount. And here they go again. At that time, there's nobody in front of the goal mouth. I talked about how it was important for Embry Riddle to maybe get ahead with this high power offense. It's going to seem difficult for them to be able to come back where you look at it the opposite way. Marymount College could be down 3 nothing and still in this game. Well, there's an old adage in, in soccer is that usually after a goal is scored, another one is scored about five minutes later. We'll see whether or not that's the case on the corner kick. A lot of players in the box for both teams. Uh, another little shot there, but that one just went wide left. Sam Marty handles it and now kicks the ball out towards midfield. Look like a handball there on Emil Peterson. Or is it Patterson? I think it's Patterson. It's spelled Peterson. But yeah, it's actually P-E-T-T-E-R-S-S-O-N. And he is from Sweden, and one of several Swedish players on this Marymount California University roster. So the Mariners with the 1-0 lead. Obviously, they would like to get more. I don't think one, one goal is necessarily going to be safe enough with his ball club from Arizona. Embry Riddle, by the way, they are the only team in the California Pacific Conference out of state in Arizona. All the other teams in the Cal Pack or in California. In the next telecast, we'll see the Mariners face the Soka University of America Lions, basically their rivals only because of geography. As Soka University is located in Laguna Niguel. And of course, the Ocean View campus for Marymount, California is in Rancho Palos Verdes. They also have a waterfront campus, MCU does, 
That's in downtown San Pedro, California. And then they have what they call the Lakeview Campus up north in the little town of Lucerne in Lake County. Oh, good shot on goal. That just went wide left. Uh, that may have been... That was Isaac Sanchez. Yeah, Zan the Sanchez of... who, who shot it from Mexico City, Mexico. So reigning Cal Pack Freshman of the Year. Yeah, I was just double checking because Sanchez is number 26 for Embry Riddle and Thomas Booser is number 28. I was trying to see what that second number was, six or eight. Fortunately, we can see the numbers on Embry Riddle clear as day. I had to think of the International Space Station was to fly over here, <laughs> Long Beach City College. They could see the numbers on the back of the Embry Riddle uniforms, which is helpful to us. Now, a battle for the ball. Gonzalez gives it. Gonzalez to sporting. His teammate. The, yeah, that was uh, Patterson. Gonzalez uh, with the new shoes today. Really rainbow sherbet ice cream colored shoes. Who knows? Where do you find these shoes? Nike, we, man. They're well, I tell you, we have, we have seen some of the, the most neon brightest shoes in soccer, and then maybe compared to even what you might see in college basketball. Just an observation. I mean, personally, I like it. Sometimes you can identify the players by their shoes. Well, some are good, some are cool, and then some are just, you know, Disasters. fall under the category, what were you thinking? <laughs> well, here's what Sam, Sam Marty is thinking. And he's going to put the ball back into play as he sets it down on the pitch. One of the things we haven't had a chance to discuss. So Josh Day is going to come on for Embry Riddle. He'll take over for Tristan Chorus. Day, a redshirt freshman midfielder from Peoria, Arizona. Got another suburb of Phoenix out. Peoria, if you're a big baseball fan, that's the spring training home of both the Seattle Mariners and the San Diego Padres, right next door to Glendale, which is the spring training home for the Chicago White Sox and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Ball comes over to Andre Winchell for Embry Riddle. Tried to get it down in the corner to either Pena or Sanchez. Sanchez with the ball, kicks it over on the far side. Day's going to try to track it down, but not before one of the Mariners pushes the ball downfield. Yeah, I was mentioning before the first goal how some of these international players from, or some of these players from Embry Riddle from the United States are actually international players. Winchell out of Las Vegas, Nevada, but was born in Costa Rica. Tony Gonzalez with the ball for Marymount, California. Kick over to the far side, headed away, but now it looks like Smith has it. Move around, the Mariners on the attack. Day though. Uh, Josh Day, you can tell, he's got the really bright blonde hair. <laughs> Don't even have to look at the shoes there. And we say all of this as a compliment and maybe a little bit in, in jest here once in a while. Oh, nice job by Thomas Buser. Double Coming defend, out goes over to Day, but before he can get to Day. Coming from a guy with Smith. no hair, I'll say the bright blonde hair comment is not, <laughs> not a diss. It's a very much a compliment. And there's Day trying to get to the ball, but it goes out of bounds. He was also shadowed by one of the Mariners. one nothing in favor of Marymount California University, or Win Neal, here in the first half. Uh, last time we looked at a uh, timing update, we were at about the 32-minute mark. Now Vogler's all over on the far sideline, kicks the ball back into play. Smith, a nice little semi-bicycle kick. Tony Gonzalez trying to chase it down for the Mariners. Stuck there in the corner. Double team now trying to move the ball over. Kick forward. And a little shot there, wide left. I think it's saying Samir Albasith. Now the ball kicked back towards the goal, and a shot goes wide left. Oh my goodness, that could have been the biggest gift of the season for Marymount, California. 
boy, Scott Smith with just an open net goal. Just couldn't convert. Sometimes those are the easiest ones to hit. So we have 20 minutes left in the first half. One nil in favor of Marymount, California. They could have had a second one right there as uh, Marty kind of out of position that time. And the Mariners, they'll take every opportunity that you can give Marymount, California to score a goal. Well, if you're Marymount, it's what if. And if you're Embry-Riddle, you just narrowly avoid a just disaster. Kind of go, yeah, just kind of exhale a little bit and go, whew, kind of dodge that one. Again, the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles and the white jerseys, blue numerals, the 2012 defending California Pacific Conference champions. And in the striped dark blue and yellow jerseys, the Marymount California University Mariners currently in first place all alone in the CalPAC Conference South Division. Thank you, Dennis. Well, one of these teams' winning streaks is definitely going to end today. Right now, obviously, Marymount College University Mariners up one to nothing, looking to continue that streak to four in a row. Now you could end up in a tie, and if you end up playing overtime, but even then, that still would not be considered a, a loss. You would get you get three points for a win, one point for a tie, zero points, and now substitution as we're going to see Philip Murray, the redshirt junior forward from Juneau, Alaska. This is a matchup to keep your eye on, is Murray and defenseman for Marymount College, Sasha Hecker, both guys really about 6'2", 6'3". Murray right now, just judging by him running onto the field, looks a lot bigger than the 6'3", defenseman for Marymount College, Sasha Hecker. Yeah, Murray replacing Jacob Breck in the Embry-Riddle 11 on the field right now. And Vogelis kicks it over towards midfield. That one's off the head of Sanchez. They battle over there trying to control the ball. Tennis power. May have been Scott Smith going up against power and then before that ball went out of bounds. See some of the fans on the far side taking in the match today. Vogelis coming way over, almost into the corner. It's not too often you see a goalkeeper wander away too far from the goal. Sometimes he may come straight out from the goal, uh, from the goal towards the box. But Vogelis, the last couple of minutes, he's been all over that end of the pitch. Vogelis with the kick. Off the head of Gonzalez. Uh, chase down. Can't quite see the number on the back. That might have been Christopher Lindahl. Uh, Sanchez. He's been all over that ball here in the first half for Embry Riddle. Comes over on the far side to Murray. And eventually goes out of bounds. Just get the sense that Marymount College has just turned it up a notch within the last five minutes, really looking to pick up the pace. Now Josh Edwards with the goal here in the first half for Marymount, California to give the Mariners a 1-0 lead over Embry-Riddle. I was going to say, one of the things that we haven't had a chance to really talk about is the fact that this is a natural grass surface here and if you take a look at the two home games at Harbor College and the normal, usual turf that they play on at field number five at the StubHub Center in Carson, that's all artificial turf. It's kind of like a question of, you know, how used are these players to playing on grass? I'm sure there may be some other grass uh, facilities in the CalPAC Conference, but it's not something to play on very often. A little header that's handled by Vogelis. So that's the uh, first really good shot on goal here in the first half for Embry-Riddle. Fabio Pena out of Brazil, where soccer is just, it's pretty much like American football is here. It's absolutely huge down in Brazil. Or high school football in Texas. There you but go. 
No, Nicholas Yabara. Oh, okay, so actually not vocalists. We understand that Nicholas Ibarra got the start today. Ibarra, 6'3", junior out of San Diego from Bonita Vista High School. He is in goal for Marymount, California. Normally we see vocalists, which probably explains why we've seen Ibarra, or Ibarra, I should say, uh, all over outside of the goal. We've noticed vocalists this season. He likes to kind of basically park himself in front. There you get to see the two different styles of the keepers, maybe one more aggressive than the other. So it looks like Patterson's going to put this ball back into play. Isaac Sanchez now pedals back a little bit and a soft little turn into Gonzalez. Gonzalez trying to get a shot that goes off the left foot. Now they clear it out a little bit more towards the goal gives give them more room to operate on offense. Dave, you mentioned earlier about the different turfs that these, that really Marymount's been playing on. We talked to the coaches and players last week. They seemed to tell us that there was really no difference and they didn't notice, but you got to think to yourself, there has to be a difference, and especially in the cleats. We see that all the time in football, depending on the shoes and the cleats and the adjustments made there. Well, the other thing, too, that's, that's always been kind of mentioned about, you know, soccer balls and natural grass versus artificial turf, and that is on artificial turf, it's always been kind of considered that the ball moves faster, especially if they were kicking on the ground type of thing. It moves faster. Obviously, it's not going to do that here on grass. The field has, I'm not, I'm not sure, really call it bare spots per se, but uh, it, it's a playable field as far as you know that's concerned but uh, and maybe it's an optical illusion from our broadcast location but it almost seems like the the crown in the middle there kind of comes Slope slopes towards bit. our end here and that's quite common um, you see that with, with high schools that have natural grass turf part of that's for drainage Isaac Sanchez with the kick. And the kick right in front of the goal. And that was going to be actually be short. Day fighting for it for Embry Riddle as the Mariners clear it downfield and the ball goes out of bounds. Power quickly puts it back in to Sanchez. So again, John San Marty in goal for Embry Riddle and Nicholas Waibara. Getting the start today for Marymount, California. One nothing in favor of MCU on the goal by Josh Edwards. Of course, if you're just missing or just joining us, Marymount up one nothing, but we could argue should have been two nothing. They had a free shot on goal, went wide left. Oh, nice steal of the ball. As Beezer was stripped of it. Missing an open netter. Very un uncharacteristic for this high scoring Marymount College Mariners team. Scott Smith getting it over to Fernando Ruiz. Uh, the ball goes out of bounds. We'll see who's going to have the throw in. Feel like Patterson's going to do the honors. And the ball goes out of bounds. That's Fernando Ruiz putting the pressure on the Embry-Riddle defense. Forcing that ball in off the Embry-Riddle defender and now a corner kick for Marymount College. Of course, their first goal came off the corner kick. Kick stays on the ground. That one right in front of the goal. All it would have taken was a header to knock it home. And, you know, based on that other previous uh, goal opportunity, that should have been a goal. You can almost make the same argument here, Rob. 
Yeah, there's absolutely disbelief amongst the crowd and here at the scorer's table that that ball was able to go all the way through the sea of bodies and offensive players for Marymount College without getting touched or a shot on goal. Battle for control of the ball. Boy, there was Sasha and Ryan, or Phil Murray getting the matchup. I said the highlight, the two big men going at it. Here we oh, go. There we go. And Ybarra has to come out and grab the ball ahead of a charging Isaac Sanchez. Semeth Alba Sith to have the restart for Marymount, California. He's wearing those bright neon green shoes as you're talking about players with different colored shoes out on the pitch. There's the restart. Knocked away by San Marty. And a sliding tackle to kick the ball out of play by Dennis Power. Just get the feeling that Embry-Riddle wants to get out of this half just down one nothing, where Marymount College is really looking to push this score to two to three to nothing before the half. Well, you know, there's always probably two scores that are always considered the most dangerous. The number one score is if you're up 2-0, and then you always feel that sometimes the, the team that hasn't scored, uh, you know, they've got an opportunity to get one goal and to get back into it or, or two, and it's all that... Uh, MLS game a couple of years ago involving DC United. And probably the, the second most dangerous score is, is one nil because all it takes is the equalizer. Eight minutes left in the first half. Again, Marymount California University one and Embry Riddle Aeronautical University zero here at the Long Beach City College Vikings s soccer complex. To our right, we see the Hall of Champions, the very famous Long Beach City College Gymnasium. It seats about 3,000 people. Many nights there calling soccer and what used to be KLON FM 88.1. Back to this one, Sam Marty, he will kick and put the ball into play. The ball of Sanchez, he's going to be marked off of it. Good job by Scott Smith. And Sanchez having a phenomenal game, very active as far as offense goes for Embry-Riddle, really leading their attack here today. Mark Irvin not too happy right now with some of his players. Irvin, extremely passionate, wants that high pace. Anytime his players slow it down, screaming and yelling. Whoop! <laughs> Smith kicks it, and it's the pop-up tent uh, where the Embry-Riddle bench is. And so far today, Dave, we've been safe as compared to last week where we got t attacked twice by the <laughs> soccer ball. Flying balls everywhere. David Smock, Rob Abreu, and our videographer Robert Linkram. Great to be with you today here on the MCU Sports Network. Again, we've had several balls that seem to go out of bounds right in the corner of the field. Had a lot of throw-ins from that position, not so many corner kicks. And doing the honors right now, there's to be Kelvin Hatch. And grabbed out of the air by Rabara. Boy, they were targeting Phil Murray there. The 6'3 forward for Embry Riddle out of Juneau, Alaska. Just an absolute giant down there on that end of the field. Scott Smith. Opportunity to try to turn around, get a shot on goal. It's going to be high. 
and misses everything. How dangerous is Victor Algren, though? Dancing, juking, and jiving just to get that shot off. I was just about to say he was having a quiet first half, and there you just see how lethal he is with the ball. So another scoring opportunity, and this one just went high. The one of the game balls kicked over to John San Marty. And again, going into the half, if you're Embry Riddle down only one nothing, you have to feel very fortunate and really like your chances of maybe making a comeback now in the second half. And of course, this is the first match of a home and home series. The other one will be played in Prescott, Arizona, as we have five minutes remaining in the first half and remains 1-0 in favor of Marymount California University over Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. Of course, they put that aeronautical in there as a lot of things dealing with airplanes, etc., being taught at Embry Riddle. Patterson with the throw in. Trying to get off the head of Gonzalez. Mark Hervin showing a, what a class act he is, scolding some of his players on offensive trash talking. Yeah, you see just, the intensity coming in here. He says he wants none of it, threatening some of the players yeah. sitting on the bench. You know, that's, ba that's basically... That's the best way to get someone to shut yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Oh, Ibarra coming out and punching it away. Al Smith with the ball for the Mariners. Kicks it downfield. And there it's going to go off of Keldon Hatch. But <laughs> Substitution coming up for Embry Riddle. Be Alex Veletica. I'm not sure if he can hear us as far as getting the pronunciation. Josh Day will come out. Well, now, actually, he's going to stay in, and it's going to be Fabio Pena who's going to take the rest on the bench. I think Pena got smacked in the mouth coming off just to get checked out. Nice little break for him to end the half. Yeah, especially just a couple of minutes as Waibara kicks it downfield. That one's going to be kicked away by Hatch. Now, even though Marymount College didn't get a shot on goal there, you hear Mark Hervin applauding the head by Fernando Ruiz. Just gives you the sense of the styling attack. He appreciates putting pressure on the keeper and the defenseman. You know, I think one, one thing I, I would change if, if I was in charge of changing rules here in soccer, I'd get rid of the offside rule. Oh, that's the most hotly debated subject between general sports fans and hardcore soccer fans. You get the general sense that most everyday average sports fan wants to see a higher scoring game, wants to see that offsides penalty come out, and then the hardcore fans. As shot right in front here. of the goal, but that was going to be headed away, and now a follow-up oh. shot is good by Smith for the goal. And of course, as soon as I start talking about the low scoring <laughs> offsides rule, we get a goal from Chris, Christos Vogelis. No, I think it was Scott Smith. Maybe it's Scott Smith. Yeah, Scott Smith with the goal. Oh, <laughs> well, Vogelis was very excited to see his teammate Smith yeah, score and that told him goal. To come back here. <laughs> Can't imagine what kind of celebration we're gonna see out of Vogelis when he scores, but uh, Marymount College gets that Second goal we had talked about, really a heartbreaker for Embry-Riddle just before the half. Yeah, so it's now 2-0 in favor of Marymount, California. Really just changes the landscape. Even if you're a coach, what are you going to say to your club at halftime? Adam Pierce, I could say, down one thing, one nothing going into the half to his club. Hey, guys, as poorly as we played, we're only down one nothing. But that story just changed 
right there on that goal. Well, I think Hervin probably won't talk about tactics too much with his MCU Mariners as much as he will about sportsmanship, the trash talking, and probably telling his defenders, go back and play in position. He said, you know, to to the Mariners on the field, and we're paraphrasing, basically, if you don't get back there to defend, they're going to score and get the equalizer. Yeah, I even think on that goal, I could overhear Hervin screaming at Christos Vogelis to Well, let's just say he went down there and he said, come on back. Yeah, I, my Barra kicks the ball downfield. The MCU goalkeeper getting the start. And now we should have the 10-second countdown here in just a moment that will wrap up the first 45 minutes here at Long Beach City College. And now San Marty kicks the ball out towards midfield, held by Gonzalez. So the first half has come to an end here at Long Beach City College in Long Beach, California. With the score at halftime, it's the Marymount California University Mariners 2 and the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles 0. And you're watching NAIA Men's College Soccer right here on the MCU Sports Network. Embry Riddle kicks off to start the second half here at Long Beach City College in Long Beach, California. The goals in the first half. Josh Edwards at 23:30. This is going to Emil Pedersen and Jason Maletti. And the second goal. I see here at, at 2.57 by Scott Smith. Really, that second goal was the backbreaker going into the half, really changed the landscape of this match. And so I'm going to mention to Mark Hervin about uh, maybe getting that other goal. He says, should have gotten the other one too. So Hervin thinks it should be 2 0. David Smock, Rob Abreu, and our videographer Robert Linkrum with you on the MCU Sports Network. Great to be with you today. Oh, my goodness. Another shot on goal and another opportunity to score for the Mariners, but some good goalkeeping by Joan San Marty. Boy, Marymount not wasting any time in the second half, trying to push the lead to three to nothing. Well, we know that viewers are tuning in and out throughout the broadcast, so we've been with us from the uh, beginning today. We apologize. But uh, for those of you just joining us, the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles from Prescott, Arizona. They are in the white jersey with blue numbers, blue shorts. And for the home team, the Marymount California University Mariners, they are in their gold and dark blue horizontally striped jerseys and dark blue shorts. And Dangerous play. Yeah, Barra, yeah, doing a great play there. Had to dive on the ball. Of course, for Merriman, California, they are currently in first place in the California Pacific Conference South Division. They also received some votes this past week for the NAIA Top 25, and a victory today might even give them some more votes. Again, game time weather were 83 degrees when we started. By the end of the second half, it should be about 88 degrees. Not much of a wind to talk about. Starting off at the northeast at 2 miles per hour and then east-northeast here in the second half, about 3 miles per hour. But we felt a little bit more of a cooler breeze beyond that throughout the game. We were talking about some of the uh, players we're seeing today. Last year's Newcomer of the Year, Jason uh, Jacob Breck. 
And Breck in the game for Embry-Riddle. Isaac Sanchez, the freshman California Pacific Conference uh, player of a year ago. So Isaac Sanchez, we've mentioned his name quite a bit. And coach of the year who has moved on was Matt Barnes, who is now Adam Pierce is the head coach here at Embry-Riddle. And for fans who are just tuning in and out, they couldn't have picked really a better game to tune into. As we talked about Embry-Riddle's last year, Cal Pac champions, and it looks like Marymount California University pacing to be the favorite to maybe take home this year's Cal Pac championship. Our next telecast on the MCU Sports Network, the Mariners will be at field number five at the StubHub Center in Carson when they host their rivals, the Soka University of America Eagles, and we'll have that game for you on cable TV. Another note to add about Embry-Riddle, they are the defending Cal Pac champions, but this isn't a team that lost all their top players. They returned five all-conference players, so it's definitely a team that will be contending again this year. As you mentioned in the first half, Embry-Riddle will host the 2013 California Pacific Conference Soccer Tournament down in Prescott, Arizona. And they would certainly like to be one of those players as we have a ball. Well, there we go. Right off my right knee. <laughs> Again, Dave, you're wide open. The players love you. Yeah, I, they respect be, your offensive capabilities. No, it has to be the bright yellow shirt. They, they get confused and they go after that. Well, speaking of after the ball, there's Dennis Power. Embry Riddle going left to right on offense here in the second half. And playing the ball over there in the corner, now it comes out being held by Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez being guarded by Kerry Allen. And eventually the ball is won by Embry Riddle, but it goes right back over to MCU. Now you have a two goal lead, Rob. I think basically at this point, you just want that clock to move as quickly as possible with as few stoppages as possible as well. From my perspective, if I were the coach, yes, but Mark Hervin and Marymount California University, that's really doesn't fit their style or their strength. They're a team that's a full court press throughout the game. So they're gonna go more towards the, hey, let's push this lead to three to nothing than to run down the clock and hang on to this 2-0 lead as we see. Oh Aubrey. my goodness, wide right. Well, he's just been a, just a slight bit off the mark, but again, you just see the ability he has to threaten with the goal. Of course, Victor Algren there with the miss. Cal Pack, Cal Pack co-player of the week. It's his second narrow miss on goal today. He's coming back again, folks. That's Smith with an opportunity. And again, Joan San Marty. Well, we, take, we talk From about Barcelona, Spain ability to score, but what a beautiful touch on that ball to set up the shot on goal. So it'll be a throw in for Embry Riddle. Dennis Power will throw it in for the Eagles. Power goes down. I still think Jason Miletti, they got tied up there now. A quick throw in again by Power. And the ball's going to be headed out of bounds by one of the well, Mariners. Sa and Sasha Hack Hacker headed that ball out of bounds, put his body up in the air. Legs went out from underneath him, and I saw it, Dave. He went face first into the turf. Mark Urban telling the players to make kind of pull up their shin guards to get ready. Yeah, and then he kind of turned around and, and said it to the reserves on the bench to do the same. So the trainer. It's good to see Hackers yeah, just fine. Got yeah. up, shook it off, but a very dangerous and scary fall there. Yeah, by Hecker, yeah. We had a chance to check with the exact pronunciation of his name. Oh, my goodness. What a great slide there by Andre Winchell. And the ball goes out of bounds here just to our left. 
So it'll be thrown coming up by Dennis Power. And Hacker gets a yellow card fired up. Power is a senior midfielder from South San Francisco, California. He will throw the ball in when play resumes. Got to figure Hacker's a little fired up after that fall. Maybe he felt he got bumped a little hard by the defender. Ball goes out of bounds. No, it's Tristan Chorus who's trying to control it for Embry Riddle. Chorus puts the ball down to get back in front of the goal. And it looks like it's going to be Isaac Sanchez Can't who will have the restart. Keep your eye on 22, Phil Murray. Big size advantage down low. Sanchez, the Cal Pack freshman of the year, restarts the game. And again, Isaac with the ball gets it over in front of the goal. Now it's going to be handled by Allen. Comes out towards midfield. And Victor Algren with the ball now battle for control. It's 11 and 7, Hatch and Winchell. Great numbers in Las Vegas. We're in Long Beach, California. 2 0 in favor of. Marymount, California over Embry Riddle here in the second half. Boy, Algren had another beautiful place ball there to Fernando Ruiz to start that break. Of course, right after the game, we'll name our man of the match. Several candidates so far. And I believe Fernando Ruiz is still down for MCU. Didn't quite see what happened there, but they're playing one man short. Yeah, in fact, Ruiz is up, but he's he's limping. And you kind of wonder how long Hervin might give him a chance to kind of walk it off or get ready to bring in a reserve. Yeah, something tells me he might not be right. Head coach Mark Hervin yelled out, are you good? And Ruiz didn't really re respond with a convincing yes. Oh, with the ball was Chorus, but he slipped. And now a battle for control there between Scott Smith and Dennis Power. Coming up with his Maletti. He gets it over to Al Basith. Comes out towards midfield. Mark Herman calling it a sloppy volley, and I think both of us would agree with that. Except for a couple of the scoring opportunities, not a lot of energy out there so far in the second half. And, and you go back to that goal that ended the first half, maybe took away from that energy, really from both teams. Maybe took the wins out of the sale of Embry-Riddle and then for Marymount California University, maybe like we discussed earlier, a little bit more conservative, maybe taking their foot off the gas a little bit here to start the second half, knowing they have that 2-0 lead, 2-0 cushion on the scoreboard. Well, I think the other thing, too, is you know, not to discount the heat. I mean, we're sitting here, and, and yeah, that's kind of zapping us a little bit. Granted, we're much older. But I think if, if you're a player, you're running up and down the field here at about mid-80 temperatures. That's going to take a toll after a while. Agreed. And we really haven't seen as many substitutions as we saw last week against Menlo. So you would think both teams not as fresh as yeah, we in our last witness in our last last matchup. All right, in our last telecast. And uh, speaking of subs, but this time for Embry-Riddle, it's going to be Fabio Pena who will come back into the match for the Eagles. And we'll see who he's going to take over, whom he'll replace. Ball goes out of bounds before Victor Algren can get to it. It'll be a quick throw in by Dennis Power. Oh, 
And a throw in by Josh Edwards. Bob for control, Miletti and Chorus. So Josh Edwards, who scored the first goal of the game with the throw in for Marymount, California. After going off Smith, Edwards kicks it over towards the middle of the field. Well, the defenders there just swarmed Algren. Yeah, there's Smith with the ball, trying to get a shot that goes off of one of the Eagle defenders. And it looked like that could have gone off of Chorus. Also over there was Kelvin Hatch. Probably Hatch, he was playing defense, whereas Chorus is a midfielder. Looks like we have a new keeper for Embry-Riddle, Alex Eldon from Littleton, Colorado. We'll check on the goalies here in the first half. We've got Waibara for MCU. Oh my goodness, Dave, and once for again. Embry Riddle. Alex Eldon punched that one away and then Marymount California University again with another attempt at an open net and just could not convert there. So Adam Pierce, the first year head coach of Embry Riddle deciding to change goalies after Sam Marty gave up two in the first half and then kind of mixing things up a little bit. Christian Vogelis on the bench and Nicholas Waibara out of San Diego getting the start from Benita Vista High School, the goalkeeper for Marymount, California. So on the restart, this could be a direct kick and we'll see who's gonna take it. Smith is out there. And a couple other Mariners as well as they put the wall together. Well, Alex Eldon definitely got to get tested here early on in the second half. And the kick by Smith into the net for a goal and it's 3-0 Mariners. Smith with the second goal today. Really just saw how much there the defense respected Algren and Alba Sith. You saw Smith, Alba Smith, and Algren all lined up there and really Embry-Riddle looked a little confused there. And then of course the new keeper Alex Eldon, really a tough task to ask for to come in fresh in the second half and be tested so early on as Marymount California University continues the offensive output. So Alba Sith on the assist by Scott Smith. So it was 3-0 in favor of Marymount, California. As the Mariners have now opened up a th three goal lead and obviously it's not over till it's over to paraphrase the old famous saying, but actually Rob, I think at this point, you'd, if you're a Marymount, California University fan, you have to feel a little bit better about this one. Without a doubt, this team has got so much momentum going forward. They're so exciting to watch. Can't help but be super impressed with what they've done here today to the defending conference champion. It's like we mentioned earlier, it's not one of those defending conference champions that lost eight seniors from their starting lineup. This is a team that returns five all-conference players, has two all-conference players in its defensive backfield, including a fifth-year senior, and yet you're putting up three goals here so far today and maybe many more to come. As we know, Marymount, California doesn't really like to slow things down. You know, it's worth mentioning on the goal by Smith, that's actually his second of the day. Now Eldon just watches the ball take a high bounce before he grabs it out of the air. And if you're Embry-Riddle now, you gotta try to salvage this game and have some positive takeaways. Don't want to see this game get any uglier as well. You don't want to see any injuries. And speaking of, looks like we had a Marymount California University player get hit in the head there. Always dangerous and scary with head injuries. But with 
Kind of holding the back of his head. And that's uh, Jim Erickson. I think he's going to put an ice pack on that one after the game. Smith to Gonzalez. A little shot on goal went wide right, so it wouldn't have gone in anyway, although Eldon kind of flew in the air to his left. Got to make sure that one didn't sneak into the corner of the net. I believe Eldon got his hand on that. We're going to see a corner kick. 3 nothing in favor of MCU. Of course, one of MCU's goals came on a corner kick, the other one coming off another free kick. So keep your eyes open here. The corner kick headed and now cleared out, at least for the moment. Oh, a high shot hits the crossbar. And finally handed by Eldon. Wow. That was kind of like a nothing kick towards the goal just for the heck of it, more or less. And it almost went in. Alba Sith, oh my goodness, he almost snuck one in. Really as close as you can get. Of course, we saw last week against Menlo the same situation right off the top of the post, just really centimeters away from another goal. In our, in our last telecast, Marymount, California defeated Menlo College 4-2. to two. Adam Pierce just before that said, come on, guys, we've got plenty of time. You know, we're taking too, too much time, you know, two minutes for a throw-in. He's trying to, you know, speed up the game because if you take too much time, then it's too easy for your players out there to be a little bit lackadaisical, so to speak. There's a kick and taken on the fly by Nicholas Waibara, the goalkeeper for Marymount, California. Waibara did a great job there communicating with his teammates, yelled out he had it. You saw the defenseman clear out of the way, and he came up and snatched that ball out of the air. MCU leading 3-0 here in the second half. Oh, nice steal of the ball by Hecker. And high ball. Where is it? Well, this lands right behind us. And it actually clears the fence. I still think we're in danger here, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I never feel safe. My eyes are wide open throughout the game. But Dave, we talked about you know the offensive output. We I compared them to the Oregon University Ducks as college football goes. You know, four goals last week, only three goals this week, but so many near opportunities. You could see why a team like MCU is capable of putting up ten goals, maybe ten plus goals in a game. Well, we've seen enough of Marymount California University at this point in the season, and. You can tell, you know, being eight and two overall, trying for their fourth win in a row. They're six and zero in conference play, trying to go to, to number seven. That there, this is something special going on here. You know, last year they made the playoffs in the NIA, lost to Menlo, uh, one nil, and you just get the feeling they're going to go much deeper in the playoffs this year. No, I agree with you 100%, and I kind of mentioned earlier, just momentum. You just get the sense that these guys are just trending upward, and it's a nonstop, really, trend where you don't really see a ceiling on this team. Other teams, you get a, a sense of a ceiling and how far they can go with. MCU, it, they really control their own destiny, in my, in my opinion. Now, to put that in kind of a comparison, you always worry about a game where you don't do well. You know, we saw earlier on the MCU Sports Network, the match against Pacific Union when it was score early and score often as MCU uh, won that game 16 to zero, and yet they turned right around days later to play in La Mirada against Biola University and were shut out 3-0. So it's something to kind of you know, worry about a little bit, but at the same time, it, it seems like this is a high octane offense and Scott Smith gets around uh, Kerry Allen. Boy, Smith just having an outstanding game. But I agree with you, Dave. I think the real question with MCU is going to be what happens when they play a close, tough game? So many blowouts, so many easy victories, wide margin of victories. What's going to happen in a close game? Are they going to feel the pressure? Yeah, and in the NAIA you know, playoffs, you're now going up against teams you haven't seen. 
you know, you have virtually like no score, scouting report. Uh, shot on goal there, gets back of the fence, which is part of the softball complex here at Long Beach City College. That was Victor Algren with the cross to, looks like Fernando Ruiz. Just tried to touch that ball in, but was unsuccessful. So Alex Eldon will kick the ball of the goalkeeper playing here in the second half for Embry Riddle. Ball being controlled by Pena. It's off on the forward kick by Power. On the corner battling for control. And eventually he's gonna be grabbed by Ybarra. And here come the Mariners right to left in the second half. Jason Maletti, the team captain, with that green band on his left arm. Tries to kick it over in the middle to Smith, but it's stolen away by the Eagles. And Isaac Sanchez. There's going to be a little shot on goal. It would have gone wide right anyway by Kerry Allen. We'll check on the time remaining here in the second half. So 20 minutes remaining in the second half. Marymount, California leading Embry-Riddle 3-0. to zero. We thank Isaac, or I'm sorry, Israel Reynoso, the sports information director here at MCU for his help in getting us updated. We have another Mariner down on the far side. And that looks to be Tony Gonzalez. Adam Pierce and Mark Hervin, the respective head coaches. Pierce for Embry-Riddle, Hervin for Merriman, California. And kind of talking a little bit about the first half of the game to each other. Yeah, having actually a productive, friendly conversation. Both guys in agreement. Not sure which rule they were discussing, but they... Here's Sanchez, kicked by Chorus. That one goes over on the far side. Ball still in play and under the control of Embry-Riddle. Jason Maletti with the ball for the Mariners. And the ball goes out of bounds. Substitution coming up for Embry Riddle. And I think Josh Day is going to check back in when he gets a chance. Also, substitution now for. Well, check that. Instead, it's uh, Bradley Venti. Throwing a bottle of water over to Sasha Hacker. Hey, we've been drinking our HCO here. You have to on a hot day like this, getting temperatures in the mid 80s. And a little header there. That didn't go. We understand that the, the long range forecast for our next telecast. I mentioned that will be the Mariners hosting the Soka University of America Lions. That will be at field number five at the Step Up Center. But we understand the high temperature for that game may only be about 69 degrees. So uh, much more comfortable. Jim Erickson coming over for a sip of water. Erickson extremely disappointed when he drank the water that it was hot. <laughs> yeah, well, there's not too many opportunities here. And then Mark Hervin told him to go back and do his job. It's a great exchange there between player and coach. Little header that goes over the goal. We talked about the temperature, Dave, and it's October. We gotta keep our fingers crossed that we're gonna get some actual winter weather here coming up shortly. Of course, then I'm gonna start complaining that it's too cold. Uh, there's a couple opportunities there in front of the goal, but the ball comes all the way out to Maletti. Maletti's ball is intercepted by Fabio Pena of Embry-Riddle. Around a couple of defenders, Pena still with the ball, finally marked off of it by Maletti. Fabio regains control. Gives the ball over to Sanchez. Sanchez 
Goes the ball, gets stolen away by Hecker. Embry Riddle has just been on the defense of this entire game. Really haven't threatened Nicholas Ibarra and the MCU defense yet. Chorus, now with the ball is Pena. Fishy down to the corner where a chorus shocks it down, but it goes out of bounds. One of the players in front of us kind of blocking our view a little bit. Looks like Isaac Sanchez is going to take this corner kick for Embry Riddle. Marymount, California leading Embry Riddle 3 to nothing. Can we mention that really they've been on defense of a quiet game from Jacob Breck out of Embry Riddle, all conference forward. You know, substitutions, Josh Day will come on for Embry Riddle. And coming on the field for the first time this afternoon will be Briley Venti. Venti will take over for Samoth Al Basith. And Day will take over. Figure that might for be, Isaac Sanchez. That might be it for Alba Sith today. Another game with the point on the last goal by Smith. He assisted. Breeze picking up here at Long Beach City College. And the Mariners just trying to wait for the clock to wind down. We'll try to get another time remaining update. And we'll check with the sports information director for the amount of time that is uh, remaining in the game. Last update we had was 20 minutes. May also want to see on, well, no, we know that Alba Sif got the, so, so 16 minutes remaining in the match. That's provided we don't go overtime, but right now Marymount, California with a comfortable 3 nothing lead. Every Riddle event has had a couple of opportunities, but not too many here in the ball game. Josh Edwards, Scott Smith, and then Scott Smith again, accounting for the three goals. Pedersen and Miletti had the assists on the Josh Edwards goal. And then, I believe it was Miletti again on Scott Smith's first goal. And then Smith Alba Sith on Smith's second goal. So that's where we stand right now. Again, Marymount, California, three, Embry Riddle, zero. Our next telecast here on the MCU Sports Network will be from field number five at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, where the Mariners host their geographic rivals down the freeway in Orange County, the Soka University of America Lions. No, Victor Algren doesn't have a point today, but he's played an outstanding game. He really just, you could just tell on a talent perspective, just really on a different level than everyone out there. Let's see why he was the Cal Pack player of the, of the week, co-player of the week, and really leading candidate for conference player of the year, you got to imagine. David Smock, Rob Abreu, and our videographer, Robert Linkram. Great to be with you today here on the MCU Sports Network. If you're just joining us, too, Marymount, California University with a comfortable 3-0 lead, but you get the sense it really should be more than that. Oh, they've had a couple of opportunities. It could easily be 6-0. Smith is marked off the ball. Controlled by Embry Riddle. Just really been just an all-around impressive performance by the Mariners. Uh, shot there over the goal. That clears the fence here. It ends up in one of the parking areas. I think that hit a... Chevy Tahoe outside the fence. 
Is that so much of a problem in soccer? But I, I tell you, if I'm ever covering a baseball game, I'm very careful about where I park my car. Without a doubt, I have memories of Little League, the ball clearing the fence, and you hear the sound of broken glass, broken windshields. Oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll do you one better. When I was in high school, I was covering a, a, my, my high school's baseball game, and there was a foul ball that hit the front windshield of a car that was moving and embedded itself into the windshield. And fortunately, it was kind of on, on the passenger side. It was just the driver in the car, so nobody w was hurt. But, you know, that's pretty good when you hit a, a moving target. There an opportunity for the Mariners again as the ball is handled by Alex Eldon. Does insurance cover that of a baseball breaks your windshield? Good question. I would hope so. But I'll never forget the fact that the car was driving at about, about 30 miles an hour. And the, the foul ball hit that front windshield of the car on the move. Another substitution coming in. We have a 26 here that's not on our roster. So Ephraim Fermona is our mystery man. Yes. We'll have to get more information on him before the next game. Embry Riddle with the restart. Ball controlled by Chorus. He moves it up forward. Josh Day. Now it's intercepted on the far side by one of the Mariners. Of course, this is going to rank as a disappointing loss for the Eagles. But not all this loss had previously won their other two ball games leading into today. A road win against Soka. I figure Adam Pierce has got to regroup the troops and move forward after today's loss. A couple of substitutions, one for each team. No, not this year. I played last year. That was my last year. Oh, okay. Lidica coming on, taking over for Chase Carlson. And then Efren Fermona. He'll come on in place of Tony Gonzalez for Marymount, California. So again, 3-0 in favor of the Mariners. Just trying to hold on here. The last update we have was about 16 minutes left in the contest here in the second half at Long Beach City College. Of course, we see Tony Gonzale Gonzalez exit, and we see the Rainbow Sherbert Shoes exit as well. Ball comes off of Kelvin Hatch. Ball hit out of bounds. Can you see some of the fans over there on the far side of the field, at least from our broadcast vantage point? Mark Irvin again saying out instructions to some of his players on the field. Throw in by the Mariners. Uh, the ball's going to be kicked by Zach Cleveland. Now uh, trying to track it down. One of the Eagles, it looked like that was Webster. Now comes over to Meletti. Meletti moves it downfield, get it off of Jafford Hernandez's head. Throw in. Going to be controlled by Pena. And Pena trying to move the ball to Tristan Chorus, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch to a Mariner. So Power will have the throw in to Pena. Pena double teamed over in the corner as we have eight minutes remaining. I'm sorry, nine minutes. I can't count fingers <laughs> as we're getting the. Uh, information from the sports information director. So we have nine minutes to play in the second half. 
MCU still leading Embry Riddle three to zero. You just get the the feeling, Rob, and I, I I could be totally wrong, and maybe if you asked the players, they would disagree with me. But it just seems like the heat's starting to get to everybody out there a little bit. Uh, you know, again, they're running up and down, and in fact, uh, it looks like there's going to be substitution. Jafford Hernandez, we thought he was out there earlier, taking over for Cora. So Jafford Hernandez comes on for Embry Riddle, a redshirt freshman midfielder from Pomona. And as you mentioned the heat, as soon as you mentioned it, we start seeing the su substitutions pick up. A lot more fresh bodies out there. Both coaches looking to get some of their better players, some additional rest. And really, when Marymount College, my goodness, and Scott that, Smith took a tumble there. Yeah, Power Just, coming up with the ball. He gets tangled up with Smith. Pena with the ball, being guarded closely by Edwards. And for those people who say soccer is not a contact sport, that's a perfect example to show that it can be as this one came awfully close to our MCU Sports Network camera and our videographer Robert Linkram kind of have a sigh of relief the ball did not get any closer to our location. You talked about the physicality of soccer Dave I mean some of these headers it's some dangerous play when the ball's up in the air and you have opposing players going for it Power on the reset, almost had a couple opportunities, and now the ball is going to go out of bounds and tracked down by Nicholas Yabara. Another substitution, this will be James Strohmeyer, a senior midfielder and defender from Phoenix, Arizona. And he replaces Dennis Power on the pitch for Embry Riddle. Corner kick. This is going to be knocked away by Yabara. Trying to track it down, see if he can get another shot. As it comes over the far side, it was Booser. Booser get tried to get to it again, but it was cleared out by Smith. And Victor is stealing the ball away. Now it's taken by Booser. Two of the top players in the conference going head to head. Get the sense with some of these substitutions by Embry Riddle that head coach Adam Pierce has maybe conceded victory. Looking to get some of his guys rest, more of his inexperienced players, some playing time. I think it's fairly safe to say it's tough to play on the road in college soccer, and here's why. You know, when you when you have two matches within a, a span of three days and if you're at home you're in your own bed you're in your own routine etc you get plenty of rest you're on the road you're in a hotel somewhere you basically you're under orders to pretty much stay in bed walk around a little bit but otherwise rest the body as completely as possible you're having to find a restaurant to eat and there's really only one good restaurant near the hotel you're kind of eating maybe breakfast lunch and dinner there although I know coaches like to uh, switch that up a little bit but it, it's difficult you're you're not in your own routine as opposed to when you're at home and even more so for Embry Riddle being the only Cal Pack team out of state where some of these teams go on road trips is just a one-day event or maybe a weekend event it's turned out to be a week-long road trip for Embry Riddle and maybe they're just worn down here as we see a break Oh, that one goes off of Eldon on the shot by Smith. Oh, check that. It was one of the other Mariners. Boy, Eldon only playing one half, but he's got a game's full worth of work in the second half with MCU just consistently putting the pressure on. I said that was Smith, but I think that was Edwards who had that chance. But anyway, here's... Embry Riddle losing the ball. Here's Smith with the ball, moving it forward. And on uh, a couple of hops, it's going to be handled by Alex Eldon, the goalkeeper here in the second half for Embry Riddle. Booser trying to get control of it. 
And go over to Pena, Fabio Pena, being guarded closely by Sanchez. Uh, oh, check that by Fermona. Uh, from Fermona. Tell you what, for Embry Riddle, Pena has played his heart out. He's been very active all over the place. Just unfortunate, really, Embry Riddle has not been able to get anything going as far as offense is concerned. And we know that time is winding down here. The last update we had was nine minutes remaining. Corner kick. Punched away and then kicked away. Three minutes remaining in the contest and 3-0 the lead for Marymount California University. Because right after the game we'll name our, our man of the match. Yeah, I think the man of the match is a... Uh, well, we won't say it yet. It's a pretty easy choice. Yes, but... No I, spoilers. I, right, <laughs> but I think we've decided who that will be. Well, controlled by Algren, Victor Algren. Although the way MCU plays and Victor Algren plays, you could see him change that very quickly. Yeah, he's being changed. He was chased by Zach Cleveland on that exchange, but the ball eventually going out of bounds, and now Maletti will inbound the ball for MCU. So right now, less than three minutes away for MCU to go to nine and two. And they'll have 21 points and continue to stay top alone in the NAI, I'm sorry, in the CalPAC Conference South Division. Well, maybe possibly see them crack the top 25. So the nine and two, they would be a perfect seven and zero in the CalPAC conference and that would be uh, the most number of wins by any team so far sam fitzsimmons will come to the game for mcu fitzsimmons 510 freshman forward from sweden scott smith coming over and getting a little drink of water there off camera and at the other end Nicholas Waibara putting the ball back into play out towards midfield. Owens headed by Smith. Pena marked off the ball. He was trying to make a drive there on the near side against Waibara. I don't think Pena saw the defender there. I thought he thought he was going to have a free shot. And the MCU defender, Jason Maletti, really came out of nowhere to snatch that ball away and kick it out of bounds. And Ibarra grabs it out of the air. A one-minute warning has been given. So by now, we're probably down to, we're going to guess, say, maybe 45 seconds. Because when we hear the 10-second countdown, and again, in college soccer, the scoreboard is official. Whereas in international or major league soccer, the referee keeps the time. Uh, with the ball, Hernandez moves it forward over to Allen. Here we go again, and Dave. Going high in the air as it was headed first by Cleveland, and then Hernandez headed it out of bounds. Now here comes the 10-second countdown. Uh, five seconds remaining. Four, three, two, one. The horn sounds, and the game is over. As the final score, the Marymount California University Mariners 3 and the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Eagles 0. Marymount California, they now go to 7-0 and zero in the CalPAC Conference. They are 9-2-0 overall, and they are an impressive 6-1 and one at home as the Mariners win their fourth match of the season, which is their high water mark in 2013. For Embry Riddle, they suffered their first loss in conference action as Embry Riddle is now 4 1 and 1 uh, in the conference. They are 5 3 and 1 overall, and their modest two game winning streak 
has been snapped. Very quickly, Rob, your impressions of the match in 30 seconds or less. I'll tell you what, you just got to be blown away with the performance by Marymount California University going up against the defending champion, a championship team that returns five all-conference players. We've gone over it time and time again. And not just to win the game, but to win it in such convincing fashion. Again, I would say Marymount California University has to be the favorite now to take the Cal Pack this season. Our man of the match is Scott Smith with two goals in the contest. And so uh, he scored the second goal. Josh Edwards had the first goal today of technically the winning goal and then two goals by Scott Smith. So Scott Smith of Marymount California University is our man of the match. Got our next telecast coming up. We'll be back home at the StubHub Center in Carson, California, as the Mariners host the Soka University of America Lions. Until then, for Robert Bray and our videographer, Robert Linkram, David Smock saying so long from Long Beach, California. Once again, today's final score, MCU 3, Embry-Riddle, nothing. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the MCU Sports Network. Good night, everybody.